Please remove any unclean spirits from this property, from this place. Let the worship continue in word, your word. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's children say, Let me thank whoever brought me the water. I do appreciate it. We are back in 2 Thessalonians. I went back and listened to 1 Thessalonians. We put our sermons online, and I went back and I listened to one of them, and I had motivation to do that because I was researching about some of the information about Future and Hope and where we're headed with the women's program. And I, re I heard myself say, almost a year ago, going into the summer last year, about this time, that we were going to go into 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. It only took me 10 months and the next summer to get back to it. Amen? We're back. Are you excited? We're back. Talking about that letter, those letters from Paul to the Thessalonians. So when I say something's going to happen over the summer, you might want to give it two or three. Right? Well, we're titling this, Check the Mailbox. How many of you love to go get the mail at the mailbox? Only those of you that don't have bills, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so, South Richfield Baptist Church. Beautiful church. Well over 100 years old. Was the first church I was called to pastor, a student pastor while I was at Taylor University, out in the cornfields of Michigan, beautiful landscape. Kirby knows it well. I see this pump from the back. Beautiful church, isn't it, Kirby? Yes. Woodwork, the, just an old country church like you see in those pictures. There was crab apple trees out in front of it. The only problem was winter time, Kirby. <laughs> They asked me when they, when they were hiring me or calling me to be their pastor, they said, we have to ask you one more thing. Can you run a snowblower? <laughs> yes, I can. So, beautiful church, and we lived in the parsonage, which was on the church property, an old, beautiful building there, and a beautiful house, and, and so it was a I think it was a spring day, and I don't know what the woman was waiting for in the mail, but she had her mindset. She was like looking out the window, I think, waiting for the mail truck to go by. And so I'm watching this play out, and here it comes, and she gets up, and she looks at me like, does your wife ever speak to you with her eyes? <laughs> Steve just went. <laughs> we can read a book. I think she was saying, you sit there and behave and just leave me alone. I think of what was going on, but you know me, I couldn't resist. She looked at me and then she's heading for the mailbox. So I decided, I don't know what's out there, but I'm heading for the mailbox too. <laughs> and she gets a little, a, little, a little quicker. She's pretty quick when it comes down to it. Her, knee, her knees don't work anymore, so I can out run her out. She, she gets up, she's heading for the door. So I'm heading for the door. She slings open the parsonage door. This is on the church property, keep in mind. There goes the mailman. There she goes. And I'm hot putting her right behind her. I don't know. I think I might have been tickling her along the way, but I was coming hot after, chasing her toward the mailbox. And she's like, get away from me, kind of thing. I have no idea what she was looking for. Don't care. Just remember, it was awesome. It was like we were kids again. We kind of were. So I don't know what she was after for sure, but I do know this. That one of the church members was cutting the grass that day. And before I even got back to the house, I think everybody knew what just happened <laughs> in the church. Right? Word spread quick that the preacher's chasing the preacher's wife around the property. <laughs> Which is a good thing. So she was heading for that mailbox. We're talking about letters. Madeline loves to go down. I can't stand for her even to go off the porch. I get nervous the way this world is today. But she says, Mom, Dad, Dad, can I go get the mail? 
She wants to go down and look, look both ways. And I'm, I'm, I'm just holding protective. I'm looking out the window. Where's my gun? Where are we at? And so, so she'll go and get the mail and come back. And some people like to go to the mailbox and get a letter. And I, I think there was about five of them of the year that, that enjoyed doing that. It's not, it's not any more a thing to do as much as it used to be with email and everything else going on, right? But Paul sent us a letter. In fact, he sent a letter to the Thessalonians. He was only there about three weeks, but then he had to send another letter. We're coming back around after several months back to 2 Thessalonians. Paul spent three weeks, as I said there. Um, we went verse by verse through 1 Thessalonians, and you can check that out online on our webpage. 2 Thessalonians, the thought process seems to be, as I study this, Paul's correcting the record. He is correcting the record. Uh, he sends this letter, and they receive it, maybe responding to a false letter. That, that was reported. There seems to be some, some evidence, some, some understanding that Paul's words were being twisted, so he, he fired off another letter to the Thessalonians, correcting the record. Also, he knows that in that area, that perse persecution is, in, is intensifying for, for that baby church. I find it, help me, help me Holy Spirit, I find with with new Christians, well, we're only with any Christian. When, when persecution or trouble strikes in our walk with Jesus Christ, people are either going to turn more into Jesus, they're going to cling to him even more, closer to his word, more with God's people, or they turn away. And this is a baby church, and Paul is concerned because the persecution is starting to intensify. What persecution? Well, they were, uh, they were being forced in that area in that time to start what was called Caesar worship, to worship a man, uh, man, to worship the emperor. But many of the Gentile Christians, many of the Christians in, Thessal in Thessalonica, they were standing strong, standing with Jesus, refusing to worship the idol. Isn't that a good thing? Well, Paul wanted to encourage them. He comes to them and with a second letter, and they refused to compromise many of them. They were all in for Jesus. Before I go any further, we've got it pretty good, y'all. I mean, we live in America in a day where we can freely do this because many men and women have laid down their life, fought for our freedom. Freedom's a precious, precious gift to be able to share the gospel freely. There may come a time, men that stood up here a little while ago, if, if, if a generation doesn't rise up like that again, we may lose this freedom. There's a lot of men there right now that are just like those men that are standing up here. A lot of women that are in right now, just like that group. Thank God for them. We need more of them. But I say all that to say, if the time comes, when we lose the freedom to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and the persecution comes, will you stand with Jesus Christ when times get a whole lot tougher than they are now? This is our introduction to 2 Thessalonians. I hope you'll get your pen ready. I hope you'll be ready to, uh, to study along as I preach. And so please, out of reverence to God, stand. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Let's look at the letter. This should be a letter you race to the mailbox to get. But you don't have to race to the mailbox because it's in your Bible. And if you don't have a Bible, we'll get you one. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 1. Paul and Silvanus and Timothy is unto the church of the Thessalonians and God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God for his word. Please be seated. Well, it's Paul and the boys again. Paul and his posse and his team and his crew. Paul and the boys. The band of brothers. Paul is writing this letter with his friends who've been through the ministry with him. Watch this now. Paul and Sylvanus, who is who? Silas. Say Silas so I know you're with me. 
It's Silas and it's Timothy. And it's Timothy. Young Timothy. Remember, Timothy was kind of timid. But Paul would share with him that God did not give him a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. So Paul had his, his buddies there and they're sending this letter back to Thessalonica. They went through trials together. I want you to be thinking about people you're close with that are Christians, Christian. Sister in Christ, brother in Christ. Be thinking of people that you lean to, that you look to, that you cling to, that you go through the hard times together with. Paul and Silas, remember, in, in, uh, in Philippi, they were beat to a pulp and then thrown in jail for sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, let's say two of you were with me and things changed drastically in this country or we went on a mission trip, let's say, and for the gospel's sake, we had our heads bashed in, beat to a pulp, left for dead, and then chunked into a third world jail, let's say. I'd say the people that I went through that with, we become pretty close Amen. through that process. Amen? Amen? We would become very close. So Silas had been through it with Paul. See Acts 16, chapter 16, verse 19 through 27. Paul sent Timothy to Thessalonica. We saw that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 2. And these men went through the fiery trials together. When I was a chaplain at New Hope Homes for the Waterfront Rescue Mission, one of the coolest things they did there, and they did a lot of awesome things for Jesus, one of the coolest things they did is each chaplain would be assigned a band of brothers. And every month, a new 10 to 12 guys would be assigned to that chaplain to spend four months with that chaplain, and he would disciple them for that four months. Doesn't that sound awesome? And through that experience, we became very, very, very close. One of my first band of brothers, one of my guys who's not here today, was Jose, who works in the sound booth. And Jose was one of the first ones. And, and you become close when you're going through something together, right? The future of hope is about to open up. It's going to open up. We're taking bids now to do the sprinkler system because God has provided an architect firm that did the work. Their name is stolen. We give God praise for them, for what God did to them. Amen? Amen? So we're already taking bids. The work's about to begin. And when a future of hope opens up, the women that are coming here are going to come, be coming here struggling with addiction, abuse. They're going to be broken. They're going to be crying. They're going to be hurting. They're going to be, they're going to be looking for people that love them. And some of these women who have never experienced the love of Jesus over a long period of time. And that's where you come in. They're, the women there in the program, program are going to get close with each other. And they're going to get extremely close with you. And you're going to express and share the love of Jesus with them. Isn't that good? And when they're going through trials, when they're when they experience the desire to relapse, when they're going through DTs, when they're, when they're missing, some in some cases they're going to come away from their children, when they're missing their children, when they're missing their husband, when they're missing people they can't be with for a while, they're going to go through fire and trials. And that's when you're going to get close with them and you're going to be able to be a blessing to them. Amen? So back to Paul, Silas, and Timothy. God used those three men as God is using you to rock the world for Jesus. Now we are close here. I'd like to thank some of you have been here the whole time I've been here, pushing 16 years. Some of you have been here for a minute. But if you've been here for a minute or any time in between, you realize that love, the love of Jesus Christ abides in. There's a closeness. And we go through sickness, trials, uh, uh, ridicule, uh, 
the hard times, we go through it all together. And I'm confident in what I'm about to say, that because of Jesus Christ, we are very close here. Amen? Amen. Not a big group of people. Think about what's going on. It's time, Sally. It's time. I want you to tell. We keep numbers for multiple reasons of the people we're able to share the gospel with on the street. But God has taken a church that basically has, I would guess, 50 members or less. And he's rocking the world for Jesus with just a little bitty group of people. And what we want to do here is share the gospel of Jesus Christ so people can get saved and then make disciples. So Sally, share the numbers of what you learned of how many people have heard the gospel over what period of time. Please stand. It's been uh, about two years ago I decided to um, do a spreadsheet so that we, it made us easier for sign-in. Uh, we could just find their name on the list and check off their needs. Um, so about two years ago I did that, so I started building the spreadsheet over those two years. And I counted it last night, just out of curiosity. We're up to 37 pages on the sign-in sheet now, and it totals up to 555 people, individuals that we that have heard the gospel in this church over the last two years. And, 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 and the exclamation point is Jesus it's the glory because there ain't enough people. Uh, God has brought churches and businesses to streets and through what we do on Sunday mornings and Tuesday mornings. And the gospel of Jesus Christ is flooding the community. And that's not counting the people that see, the, that hear and see the gospel played out and heard on social media. Amen. I want you to be encouraged today. You, you are at a place it is all about getting the word of God out so that folks can be saved and become disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Keep up the good work. You are impacting the world for Jesus. Not to mention the support we're giving to the missionaries. So, Paul, Timothy, Silas, they write and pick back up, if you would, in verse 1, unto the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This letter is God's word. As much as any, any book in the Bible, any letter in the Bible, 2 Timothy 3.16, mark it down. You're hearing God's word penned to a little bitty church, a baby church, the church of Thessalonica, which has been brought to us over the years, and now we're to, to follow it as if the, the word of God, as if that letter is in your personal mailbox. Amen? Amen? The grace we come to in verse 2. Grace, that means favor. How many of you want God's favor on your life? Say amen. amen. Ooh, come on. How many of you want God's favor on your life? Amen. Here we go. Grace, favor unto you, and peace. How many of you need some of that Holy Spirit peace poured on you right now? Ready? Amen. Ready? Amen. Come on. Come on. Amen. We don't want to just fly through this introduction. Grace, favor unto you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The peace that passes all understanding. So when our minds are stressed out, maybe they were stressed out about their persecution. I have no idea what you're stressed out about. I got enough to ask God to help me with my stressors. To give me peace about things. But you know, the Holy Spirit knows. And I'm telling you right now that God wants to pour out his peace on you. He wants to have his favor on your life. And so you can stop stressing and just turn it over to Jesus. Jesus has it. He's got it. How do I know? Because he's, he's helped you before. Say amen if he's helped you before. Amen. Say amen if he's brought you through the fire before. Amen. Why would he stop now? How good to have God's missionaries praying God's favor and peace on them. I love that some of the missionaries we support pray for us on an ongoing basis. Us, I hope to support Julian and uh, where is he? Where? What part of the world is he? To, uh, to the areas over by Russia. Over in the, that part of the world. 
and we hope to take him on someday as God blesses us financially. He prays for us all the time. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. We're, we're, we're trying to help so many missionaries. I'm getting confused, but praise God. Uh, we're able, this little bitty church, give or take 40 or 50 members, I don't even know. And God is using you to, to reach out across the world, to have others take the gospel across the world, and your mission field right here in Ensley, in Pensacola, in Camp Tolman, Scampi County, Molino, Gulf Breeze. So these folks pray for us. God's favor and peace. Praise. We come to verse 3. The gratitude. The gratitude. We are bound to thank God always, Paul says, for you, brethren, as it is meet. What does that mean? As it is fitting. Because that your faith groweth exceedingly. Big thanks and praise from Paul to the Thessalonians. Their faith was growing. What happens if your faith is not growing? I hear backside, you quit, you go stagnant, you could be going in the other direction and have no faith. So how does faith grow? Well, uh, I'm thinking you're going to be tested. There'll be reasons to have faith. <laughs> we don't always like that, do we? We don't always like that at all. But their faith was growing. The language their faith was very vigorously growing at a rapid pace. And that's what we want here, guys. Look, look at me. That's what we want here. That means there's going to be trials. There's going to be difficulties. I mean, if there's, not, if there's not something that's happening to help us see just how God will come through, how is our faith going to grow? We need to be in his word. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God, right? We read his word, and then we see these tests, and we see the word of God that became flesh and dwelt among us. We see Jesus Christ come through through the power of his word, through the power of the Holy Spirit, and our day-to-day -day activity. When you have trouble, oh, this is hard to say, when you have trouble in your home, in your family, praise him, because your faith is fixing the world. You have trouble at the church. Oh, Lord, I don't want to say it, but I know I'm supposed to. Praise him. Because your faith is fixing to grow, right? You have trouble on the job. Praise him. You have trouble here, there, everywhere. Praise him. Because you're going to see a faithful God who's always faithful, faithfully come through for you again and again and again and again. Amen. Amen? Amen. But we are sometimes faithless. He was always faithful. So many praise him. Amen. Amen. I prayed last Wednesday night at prayer meeting. We'd like to invite you to that. Lord, please strengthen our faith. We pray big prayers here, don't we? Big prayers here. Starting out with nothing. Starting out with Jesus and that's it. Big prayer, big God prayers. Faith grows with each test. We pray for healing. Kenny, tell me, have we heard about people we prayed for? Where's Kenny? Kenny, he's way in the back. Have we heard about people, Kenny, who were healed from cancer in the last six months? Yes, we have. And did we pray for that? Yes we, yes, we did. Healing. Now, does God always heal? It's he, he's sovereign. He makes the call, but we're going to ask him because he's able. When someone's healed, faith grows. How about a future and a hope women's recovery program? How about that train was moving at 100 miles an hour? God is blessing. He gave us a thrift store. He gave us he gave us all kinds of blessings and finances were rolling in. And then we got to that mountain that we knew he had to blow down. And he started to blow holes in it. And all of a sudden, it was like a six-month stop. You gotta know your, your preacher was struggling and whining. Do you ever whine when God's not doing it fast enough? I was whining. Come on, Lord, please. We want to help these women. By the way, these women, that, a lot of them that need the help have been struggling a lot longer than I've even had this in my heart and had to do this, amen? But I'm begging, please, Lord, let us do this. Fire marshal's involved. Fire marshal said, you're going to need an architect. An architect? Cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. 
The first bid was $150,000. Jesus, we got nothing. And you want us to come up with $150,000? The fire marshal came, thanks to Gary and Jessica, find out we have a firewall right there, chop this half of the building off. We don't need the sprinkler system here just where they're going to be sleeping. That price, I'm believing, went way down. But then he's like, the fire marshal says, you need, you need, you need an architect. I love what you're doing, but most people quit. Most people don't follow through on this, Mr. Henry. Okay, well, we don't quit. God's put this on our heart. So I put out one of those many billion videos. Please give us an architect. Sally knew somebody that knew somebody that knew somebody. And here comes Stoa. Oh, God, I, I know right there. Help us to satisfy Caesar. So we can do this for you, Jesus. And don't you know that God sent an architect from, from Stoa, whose name, and it said it on his business card, was Caesar. <laughs> Can't make that up. All the work they've done for us thus far, and they just finished 98% of it. We can start on the building. Last week, they just finished after we waited for six month, months. So far, pro, since we've been pro bono. That's only the Jesus. Tell me that's not strengthening my faith. But then there was a long wait, wasn't there? Have you heard from the architect, Alice would say? Every couple weeks, like a gnat, I'd check in and say, how's it going, y'all? We're still here. Now, they got real jobs and families to feed and all that happened with their lives. And they still managed to finish the blueprints to lay out the plan for us and to be a blessing. And we're going to praise God for them till the day. They're invited to the party, amen, when we open up. They're celebrating. Praise God. So, all these tests and trials, we're not done yet. Oh, Lord, please don't want to take another year. We're not done yet. I'll whine again, but I won't do it again. But listen, our faith is growing. Amen. Amen. The Thessalonians, their faith was growing. We pray big prayers here, don't we? We pray for a bus, God gave us a bus. We pray for shower homes, God gave us shower homes. Every time, by the way, you or I are criticized. <laughs> Faith grows. Every time a need is met, faith grows. Be grateful for the test. No one likes to be tried and tested and go tested and go through the fire. No one likes that. But God has a purpose with it. He's growing our faith. In the Thessalonians, their faith was growing. We're moving. And the charity, the love of every one of you all toward each other abounded. Paul is bragging on them because they love, love each other desperately. A church that doesn't love each other isn't really, isn't really a church at all, is it? And it can be a social club. I guess it can be a, a church, you know, as it said, Divided will fall. We don't want that. What overcomes that? Love. Taking a back seat to self. In fact, it's a command of Jesus that we're to love. Um, well, I don't like what that Christian did to me. Well, get over it. Amen? Go love them. Swallow the pride. Did I just say that out loud? I guess I did. Move on. Jeff Evans. I'm guilty. Get over it. Love them. Pray for them. Start praying for good for them. We need to, if, if we would all just swallow the pride, stop digging it. That's not, I don't think it's happening here now, but oh, it has in the past. If we would just surrender to Jesus Christ and love each other, we'll continue to do the things that we're doing here. It's not, this is not, pain is not an option here. Bitterness is not an option because it's not optional with Jesus. The Thessalonians were loving on each other. Paul's thankful for the love the love for each other was increasing, the language is, abundantly increasing. Raise your hand if somebody at this church has ever loved on you, expectedly or unexpectedly. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. If you haven't loved on you, give us a second. We'll get there. <laughs> Okay. 
We're little, so sometimes we get spread pretty thin. We get spread very thin. And uh, please be patient with me. Uh, getting all around and sometimes we pass through. We have a, another flock, by the way, that comes on Sunday afternoon. A lot of them are homeless. And we love to love on them as well. And so we get spread pretty thin, but we try very hard. And the Holy Spirit moves in our hearts to spread that love of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. I want to think that we're growing in love as well. In stealth, you're finding creative ways to love each other. Well, some of you got busted with this latest one, but that's okay if you get busted for loving somebody secretly. It's okay. Amen. Nice try. She's a little hard-headed. <laughs> but awesome. <laughs> we love her very much, don't we? Yeah. Amen. We love each other here, don't we? Yeah. Amen. You know, I, I gotta say something. There are people, I'm just gonna say her name, like Sally, who who where's my guitar? Who um who she gives everything she can to her family and to this church. And she still takes the time. She found out it needed a 12-string cable. I don't even think she has money to do this kind of stuff. And she went and bought this for me. Last week, she bought me a thing that charges my phone. I mean, I didn't ask her to do that. I know she probably could, I don't know, get some groceries or something. I don't know. And she gives everything to Jesus. So can we give God praise for her and others like that? Love is a Love is lived out, right? Yeah. And I don't want to just sell it a brief. It's everybody, right? Amen. Amen. It's not just one person in here. And I don't want to, I'd have to say everybody, but I recently that's come to my mind. So I want to use that example. But you all do that kind of stuff. Yeah. Keep loving each other intensely. Let it abundantly grow at this church. And that will draw in more like-minded people to help us. Yeah. Amen. People are attracted to the love of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So, what I want us to do to close today, before I share the gospel, I want you to please stand up if you'll work with me here. Say it. Amen. Amen. I love I love the introduction here. I don't want to fly through it because the letter is not only to the Thessalonians, it is to Edley First Baptist Church. So what I want us to do before Mindy starts playing, I'm looking, you're already to serve, so just hold on. Hold on. I want you to tell as many people in this room as you can. You gotta be bold to this. God didn't give you a spirit of fear. As many people as you can in 60 seconds. Mark it, somebody with a watch. In 60 seconds, I love you. On your mark, you're going to have to move. Get set, go! I love you.
all the time. Amen. I was watching before the service. People were coming in. Hugs were happening. It was a good thing. We want, we want to love Jesus 